forgot to mute. Hey, um, it's great to be here in some strange way. Definitely great to be part of what's happening tonight. A big thanks to Experimental Sound Studio and Corbett versus Dempsey and all the musicians who are playing tonight and musicians everywhere trying to work through this period. Um, uh, yeah, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> follow. Thank you, Mr. McPhee. I'll do my best, and um, yeah, it's good to be a part of this.
first solo record in 2002 in the space with Malachi Richter and so it seems special to be doing a solo concert here again or solo music again in this space for people to listen to um, this next thing goes out to John Corbett because he was uh he told me that uh, he had heard a recording recently, which I believe was with Paul Litton and Kent Kessler and I, and he um, mentioned that I played a lot of bass clarinet on it, and that I didn't really do that much anymore, or not so much anymore. Uh, I actually play the bass clarinet, but don't travel with it too much, because when you could fly, taking multiple horns on a plane became more and more problematic. So this goes out to John as a thanks for helping organize this concert, for inviting me, for doing uh, all the things at Corbett versus Dempsey with the visual and sonic arts. Um, so bass clarinet. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you. <laughs> it's something um, I have to laugh a bit because I've definitely done shows where the uh, audience response is so much similar to this right now in my living room. <laughs> so it's keeping me humble. Um, <clears throat> as everybody's trying to do now, uh, trying to make sense of what's going on if possible and trying to keep busy, trying to do uh, creative work in the fields that you're involved in, and um, trying to look at the opportunity maybe, if that's not the right word, to think about things I can do now, which I couldn't do normally because I spend so much time, or used to spend so much time touring. And um, I've been trying to figure out how to approach solo music for almost 20 years now. And um, I thought, okay, this will be a good time to work on it and um, focus on it, since that's all I can really do now musically, um, as far as performance and production. And um, then the invitation came uh, about a week or so ago to be part of this concert, which kind of kicked me in my ass to really dig in and work on this. So all this music I'm playing tonight is, is, this is the first performance, and I feel really um, happy to get this opportunity. This is like really special for me to be part of something like this. And so I thank everybody who's been involved and, and all the inspiration from the musicians performing tonight, but in general on this series, the quarantine series, uh, it's just really inspiring. So thanks to everyone. And this is a uh, newer, <laughs> another newer piece. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
to play. It's been great to play all four horns in a concert. It's rare to get to do that. So I'm happy to be able to and happy to play. So the last concert I did uh, was going to be the first concert on a tour with Nate Woolley and Paul Litton uh, starting at Elastic Arts in Chicago. And within 24 hours, we had to cancel the entire tour, uh, get Paul Litton on a plane uh, using Miles. Uh, basically, a day later, he made it out of O'Hare uh, just before the seven hour line started on Sunday. I guess that would have been the 15th or 14th, 15th, I guess. Uh, he got home, he's safe, um, which was the most important thing really at that point, connected directly to the tour. But the last gig I did was with Paul Litton Duo. Um, Nate uh, didn't make it to Chicago uh, because we had to cancel everything. And I'd like to de uh, dedicate this particular piece to Paul Litton, uh, who's been a major source of inspiration for me for many, many years. And I was looking forward to the tour with Nate, who uh, in the last you know do half dozen years or more has been crucial to uh, the way I think about music and has really impacted me maybe as much as Paul, even in the time I've known Nate, which has been less. But to travel with the two of them on a trip in the U.S. and bring that music to different places um, and then lose it all. Um, from a creative standpoint, after spending like a year of planning to go into that with all the details and coordinating with the presenters, all of whom were amazing, uh, trying to keep the tour going until it was clear just how serious everything was because that wasn't clear for a while either. Um, it's the creative loss and the social loss that's really the toughest. And uh, getting to kind of participate in anything like this, as I said already, is, is a way to connect people. And one of the amazing things I know that's come out of this through talking with Experimental Sound Studio is all the connections and bridges they're building now between creative people playing music 
experimental music, experimental arts uh, in the U.S. and beyond, you know, outside the borders here, uh, connecting with people and programming music uh, almost every night now um, and making things happen. And the people that I know in this particular field, they're all people like that, amazing people finding solutions and not just complaining about problems and blaming things for not going the way they want, even if it's really hard. So I miss the direct contact with people, and I'm sure like all of you, I've spent a lot of time on the phone calling and writing to people, try to keep the, the bonds tight. So uh, keep safe and, and good luck and keep healthy. And this last piece goes out to Paul Litton.
much. Take care. It's been a beautiful experience. I hope you enjoyed it too.